Hello, hello, and welcome to today's Pi Live um, country focused Spotlight India. Hi, Nick, and fellow panelists. Uh, I'm Sushil Sukhani, uh, the founding uh, director of Advice International, uh, based out of India. Uh, founded this company 30 years ago, and apart from being the head of the company, I wear the hat of a parent whose child has gone abroad to study this year, as well as uh, being a student in the past. And I have diverse experience across the industry because we recruit to multiple destinations out of India. Thank you. Sushil, I'd like to start with you, if I may. Would you like to give us an overview of, um, an up-to-date overview of student mobility and the outbound Indian market, please? India has been sending students abroad and like Nick said, it is looked at now very closely as one of the main uh, source markets for international students. Uh, over this period, uh, during COVID, two markets have done exceedingly well, which is UK and Canada. Uh, I'd start with describing the UK market because of the Brexit, we expected it to go up and it, the volume towards UK has shown positive growth even in the period of COVID and fall 2020, September 2020, and even now, September 21. Uh, the number of students going to UK has been upward and uh, there is continuous demand. Uh, so the strategies uh, laid out by the UK government supporting students in whatever way for travel, for allowing them to commence programs and give credit towards post-study work has been very well received in the Indian market. But neck to neck, at least in our company, Canada is another destination that is giving uh, a good fight to UK and their government too has been uh, very supportive of students and the numbers therefore are similar ahead of what they were in September 19 with lot of students starting online and getting the credits for studying uh, towards their post-study work uh, when they eventually travel. So both these markets are you know, I think predominantly covering the largest part of every agency in the country. Uh, next would be the US market. The governments did put in a strategy for students to travel, but it came in late. They have supported students with visas, but not uh, too much towards post-study work OPT. And uh, the market's slowly moving out of the period of uh, the change old administration into the new administration and the demand is uh, increasing gradually. And another market which traditionally has taken a lot of students from India, Australia, there the governments have not been very sensitive to the Indian students need of needing to travel. And they have only looked at allowing students to study online or maybe process their visas. But a big important part of students in India is that they'd like to travel and feel uh, the market and the students and the you know experience. So that's not taken on as well. Now these markets predominantly take about 80% of the students that uh, move out of India. So I'm not getting into specifying what's about the next 20%. We can take that as we go ahead. However, one important thing as most of India is vaccinated and uh, the restrictions to travel are reducing in our market. We are seeing an increased footfall of students in our, in our offices across uh, 23 cities in India. And that's a very healthy sign uh, of, uh, you know, we seem to have come out of it well, fine, fairly clean. Thank you, Nick. So overall, Sushil, sorry to come back straight to you. Um, would you regard the, the overall market as being in a growth situation? Yes, Nick, it has been uh, in a growth situation ever since, uh, you know, I guess when the vaccine was introduced and there's been signs of growth. And if I was to forecast the following year, all destinations I think would grow. Not only the ones I mentioned, but every destination would grow. They would keep buying with each other, but I see all destinations going up. The overall market, in fact, I think, having grown. So therefore, every destination, they won't be pulling students from each other, the destination, there'll just be a growth in the market. 
Are you at all worried that your traditional model of um, sending students overseas is going to be undermined by these initiatives for in-country delivery? Uh, so, Nick, I'm very much with what Anvisha says. There's not going to be an impact uh, at all, and I'm quite positive about it. Uh, one of the factors I feel that even though our education policy that has been uh, proposed and uh, yet not enacted uh, is excellent and is very, very broad and covers a lot of uh, parameters, it restricts partnerships to the top 100 universities the world over. And that is a big constraint. If that door opens a little more, and we have, uh, I just got some news where our Prime Minister Modi has reconfirmed this data less than 24 hours ago. So as I know, it stands strong at the top 100 institutions. We would need that door to open up much more wider for it to have any impact on the students that are actually traveling overseas. And when students go abroad, there's, there's a dual focus. There's education, uh, there's experience, and there's career. They're looking for it all. And again, to replicate that with uh, collaboration in India to the present level of expectations, it's going to have its own you know, time. And at the same time, the markets will develop too, because India has a, a shortage of education capacity, high quality education uh, facilities. So the market will keep growing and parallelly exist, but I, I don't see an impact at all on numbers of students leaving India to study abroad. You are very much the same opinion, or are you quite active in exploring mm -hmm. um, possible new markets for you to bring students into India? So uh, some time back, I had an office uh, set up in Dubai and I did experiment with the uh, aspect of trying to get students from the UAE to study in India. And I got an insight into that market. Uh, there are some interesting uh, characteristics. One is a large part of the numbers of students that we see coming to India, actually people of Indian origin that come in that data because they might have changed their nationality or their parents have changed their citizenship, but they're Indians coming back to India. So. At last, I have a figure of about 49,500 students who picked India as a destination to study last year. And a fair amount of that would be Indians coming back to India uh, from markets such as the Middle East. The other segment that people come to India to study is from countries that have uh, much lower budgets. So these are destinations like from, you know parts of uh, Africa or parts of Asia where budgets are really constrained and those students are unable to go to the established international markets and they come to India because of a price point and their expectation for uh, quality accommodation services hygiene facilities are not the same as you know one would expect when a student goes overseas to study because India has yet got to develop a lot of that infrastructure. Now, there are a large number of new age institutions in India that are developing high quality infrastructure and attracting students and marketing Indian uh, education abroad. But it's yet got, uh, the infrastructure has yet to be improved, expanded, uh, to be able to have any significant impact on other traditional markets that we look at when we look at uh, recruiting. So the outbound markets that we supply students to will not get affected. It is a different segment uh, that I see that will be coming to India. However, I feel India, if it plays its cards right, because of its low cost of uh, salaries, low cost of uh, maybe infrastructure, can really be a force to reckon with in some time. So it has the potential to grow, but for the moment, it's not that big a market. Yeah, I, I do look, uh, agree with what Adhizar has to say. Uh, however, change will continuously happen. Uh, uh, international destinations will keep altering policies to try and attract more and more students. 
So I feel that there would be some kind of a competition like uh, the day Australia really opens up, I, I don't expect it to be walking. I expect it to be running to kind of to get back into, you know, the getting the share of the market that might have been lost to other destinations. And at that same moment, I don't expect any other destination to slow down. The UK would be running to get students over Canada and the US. And there would be, I, I envisage new incentives rolled out by government, uh, maybe by institutions or something. And there would be change, definitely uh, changes around.